are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Good morning. We have just packed up the car and we're leaving Grosseto and we're heading a little bit further north into the real rolling hills of Tuscany. We're actually going back to stay with Marie and Lorenzo from Authentic Tuscany who you would have met um, a few weeks ago, probably about three videos back. And we're going back to stay with them and we're staying as paying guests this time by the way. We're not just freeloading on them, we are paying. And we're going to go and explore that area a bit more. Siamo stati in un bellissimo agriturismo e Nicky mi stava dicendo che non c'è una parola per agriturismo in inglese. Agriturismo, if you don't know what it means, I don't know if it's a widespread word in the English language now, but it basically means a type of um, bed and breakfast that you can go and stay in that is usually based on a farm. So there's normally lots of land around, chickens and sheep possibly, and animals and maybe fields and stuff to pick and stuff. But it's an agriturismo, is like a working farm that you can go and stay on. You don't have to go and work on the farm, you don't have to pick vegetables and stuff, but there will be probably animals and land around you. Sì, e siamo andati appena via da questo agriturismo, dove la signora Simonetta e sua figlia Sofia ci hanno trattato in un modo bellissimo. E inoltre siamo andati via facendo colazione con una splendida torta ecco sono di lato adesso eh? <ride> e è una torta buonissima che ha fatto il loro papà questo è quello che intendo per paesaggio toscano è bellissimo We stopped along the way to see an interesting property that we'd found for sale. The agent and the owner showed us around. How about it guys, if me and Carlo open our own B&B, would you like to come and stay with us? <laughs> uh, what a dream. Due, cioè dentro qui ce ne due de Now, this property has quite a decent sized garden here. But it also has, which can be sold separately or not, 27 hectares of land, which we definitely don't need, it's far too much. But I wouldn't mind this field in front of us here. It goes down to a little stream at the bottom. Holly likes it, don't you? <laughs> I do like it, I must say. This is in the middle of nowhere though. I don't think Carlo would be convinced about that. A me piace moltissimo questa zona e mi fa ricordare noi vent'anni fa che siamo venuti qua e io mi sono divertito tantissimo a guidare su queste strade ricche di curve e adesso lo sto riscoprendo, è un piacere fantastico. Poi Niki è sempre piaciuto uh, venire qua e provare a trovare una bella grande tipo fattoria dove... mi sta dicendo niente, non devo andare di là, ecco qua, perfetto. Trovare una 
bella casa grande dove magari fare un B&B e ospitare le persone so basically my my dream has been and this is for years and years I've always wanted to have my own B&B where people can come I've got this idea in my head of a big table outside where people can have dinners under the stars with the olive groves that sort of thing the no, Italian dream era il tuo sogno anche quando stavi in Inghilterra volevi fare questo cornomaglia giusto? yeah yeah I mean even even so let's say 16 years ago when my mum died and inherited the money to buy some property uh, we were looking into buying an Airbnb or even a restaurant in Cornwall we were already looking and this is 15 16 years ago now we ended up deciding it wasn't the right time to do that and we we bought a an apartment in London which I currently rent out um, but now that sort of served me well for the last 10, 10 or so years and now it just occurred to me recently that I could actually sell that apartment and get on with this dream that I've had so it's something we're considering it's something we're looking into we're definitely not leaving Positano yet. We will always have the house in Positano. That's going to be in the family forever. And it would be a matter of spending some time here and some time there. Obviously, this is something we're just starting to look into right now. We are just scouting out areas, uh, looking at some properties along the way, just to get an idea of what there is available for the price that I can spend. Um, but I think it's a fun journey to go on and we're happy to bring you guys along with us. Sì, chiaramente questo non deve essere un per forza ci spostiamo da Positano. Semplicemente è bello visitare nuovi posti, è bello anche per cercare nuove case, è una cosa che io trovo molto interessante. Poi sul fatto di fare il B&B è, è perfetto per me che piace così parlare tanto con gli altri. Nuove persone, più chiacchiere. Nuove oh, persone. <ride> Ma come oh, sei cattiva? Io vado bene, vai. now at Massa Maritima, which is a very very sleepy town at the moment but apparently it comes alive again in the summer and we've just had lunch in that little restaurant there, Pana Vini Fantasia, I think that was what it was called and we're just going to walk back into the piazza which is absolutely stunning, very very empty. Dove abbiamo conosciuto una napoletana molto molto carina e molto molto simpatica. Sì, sì, we've just spent like an extra 40 minutes probably <laughs> chatting after we finished our meal and we had a good old chat and what do we think of the house that we've just seen? La casa era davvero bella, anche il posto era bello, però non c'era niente intorno, nessun... cioè voglio dire era, era troppo isolato ecco. Yeah it was, I mean the house was just perfect, there was so much that you could do to it, it had so many rooms, it kept opening doors and there was more and more rooms and it sì, was yeah it was really really good and there was the option of more land uh, and it, everything was right except for the location it was very isolated very isolated and no phone reception either we are back in Vico Pisano. We are with Marie and Lorenzo again. Uh, Marie's just popped out. Lorenzo's here talking to Carlo. I'm trying to get Carlo out of the house because they've got a fruit and vegetable market this morning in the little piazza in the town centre. And I want to go and see it and have a look around. Um, we've been here a couple of days actually. Yesterday we took a day off from filming and YouTube and Instagram and just had a lovely wander around. We had a nice couple of big walks around town. We actually went to see a property which was very interesting but totally not what we were looking for it actually was a house and it had a restaurant underneath and of course totally wildly not what we want we do not want to go to a restaurant but there were so many possibilities and it got us thinking oh we could do this we could do that we spent the whole afternoon fantasizing about doing all these other things that we'd never thought of doing but then we were like hang on a minute wait is this what we want no we'd be worked to death running a restaurant we don't want to do that so we 
put that aside I'm and sure car that's carried that's on looking. But we've had some lovely walks around. The nice thing about this town is that okay, there's yeah, so many good. places to walk around the countryside. It's yeah, great. Yeah, it's Anyhow, we want to take you down to the market before they pack up and go. So let's get our coats on and go out. <ride> Questa è la terza volta che veniamo a Vico Pisano ed io ancora non ho visto alcune delle parti più belle di questo posto. Another nice thing about Vico Pisano is that everything is very compact in the town center. The car park is very very close to the house and there's a market just at the other end of the street and there's a bar and it's all very easy to walk around. Um these do not stop talking. Literally can't get a word in edgeways with them. So this is the little town square. The little piazza over there, a little green. And there's a little market over this side. Cantuccini. Fanno il miele. So all the little bunting flags are for a carnival, which will be, I think, next week at some point. Pretty! If you've ever been to Italy in carnival, you'll know about the confetti that they have. So basically, it's something that the kids use. It's basically confetti. Do you remember at weddings back in the 80s and 90s, you'd throw a box of confetti, just little bits of coloured paper, and you'd throw them on the bride and groom? Well, they use those at Carnival, except it doesn't come in little boxes. It comes in huge, huge bagfuls. So you walk around anywhere in Italy at Carnival time and you'll find that the floor is covered in confetti. I'm on the little village green now and you can see that it's everywhere. It's completely biodegradable. It's just very, very thin bits of paper, but it is everywhere. And the kids have an absolute ball playing with it, throwing it at each other and throwing it at the parents story for you when Sky was about seven or eight it was her birthday and I thought it'd be fun to buy every kid um, a bag of confetti her birthday's in February so it's round about carnival time so the bags of confetti are for sale at that time and I thought rather than do a little goodie bag which I probably did as well actually but I thought every kid could have a bag of confetti and then we wouldn't need entertainment at the party and they could just play with the confetti so we did that we had a very small apartment at the time and there was piles and piles of this confetti on the floor in every room it went everywhere the kids had an absolute ball they loved it uh, but the confetti just never finished and for years and years afterwards we were finding it in pockets in coats in bags in shoes we never got rid of it all it took forever to clean up now i'm sure if i look carefully i will find a shop with some confetti for sale in it and i will show you where are they here they are Carla's just corrected me, it's not called confetti in Italian, that's the English word, it's called coriandoli. Si, They're all teasing me now. Coriandoli. This, this, this is what it gets sold in, so you get these huge bags, slightly smaller ones here, but you get these huge, huge bags, and they buy tons and tons of them, the kids just run around throwing it everywhere. You can imagine 15 bags of this in a tiny apartment, we'd never do that again. It was fun though, we'd say. And then there's also the streamers, which they run around throwing as well. Stella <laughs> Filante. Stringy stars. We call them streamers. And yeah, you, you, you take one off and you blow and it's just, it's a streamer. You know what a streamer is, I don't explain that. Facciamo una cosa, ma... Stringy stars. Compriamo le cose dopo, usciamo fuori e le faccio vedere come vanno. Dai! Pronta per vedere come funzionano queste cose. Adesso non mi ricordo più ma dovrebbe funzionare così. <ride> eh, mi sarà la visita, eh? Dai, facciamo il comando, vediamo ah. se.
bella la Toscana, eh Lorenzo? Eh, bellissima ragazzi, meravigliosa. Uliti everywhere. Sì, 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 sì. Eh, Tutto biologico qui, eh. Acqua, Tutto eh... biologico. Mettono lo zucchero, il succo di, di arancio e, e le insetti vanno dentro lì ah, sì, sì. e muoiono. Maria e Lorenzo hanno deciso che vanno a us around the area e show us some of the little villages. So where are we now? Uh, now we are in Montemagno. Montemagno. Uh, Monte next to Monte Calci, above Calci. Above Calci. Nice, Calci. nice village. So we're about 15 yeah. minute drive Lisa. from there. Yes. We're going to explore. Near yeah. Pisa. <laughs> Very, very high up, top of the mountain now. We're going to see another house. Lorenzo keeps finding houses for us to see, it's quite funny. They're all wildly inappropriate, but it's fun to look. Now, this is an interesting fact. What is that? It's not a swimming pool. It's not a duck pond. That is an anti-fire pot pond. So that is water for the helicopter to come and dip into if there's a mountain fire and it replenishes from a natural well where you get over 40 litres of water coming up every minute. So that is really really handy to have in the middle of the mountains. <laughs> okay definitely a bit more work than we had anticipated. Keep Carla busy forever though. <laughs> The views from here are absolutely incredible. And there's even a hiking trail that passes through the property. So the property starts where those trees are down there and then goes all the way up. So pretty much just past those trees there. It's a big, big piece of land, but it's a big, big renovation job. And that's not for us. Just off to the side of the main house, there's this little outbuilding. Let's go have a look inside. Well, that's what's inside. A nice big fireplace. I'm sure you could put a mezzanine floor up there and live in that while you're renovating the big house. Back down in civilization, this is the little town of Buti. B-U-T-I, everyone always laughs at that. B-U-T-I, Buti. <laughs> Booty. Behind me, Marie is doing an Instagram story on a traditional local drink, which is called a ponce, or a ponche, ponche, I think is how they describe it. I think it's a coffee with some sort of alcohol in it, but I'm not having that, so I'm having a cup of tea, but we're in this lovely little bar and there's some lovely cakes there. And this is the reply we've had from one of the estate agents about a house we would have liked to have seen. It is possible to fix a date for the 5th of October to visit the house. It's the 10th of February. And what are we going to do afterwards? We're going to have, we're not having dinner, but we're not having aperitivo. We're having an... Aperitivo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is? <laughs> Which is a mix of an aperitivo with dinner. Cena. So it's uh, served like a buffet, which is very popular here in Tuscany. Is it in Positano? No? No, you're lucky if you get a bag of peanuts with your drink. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet, and you just pay the price of a drink. Sounds fascinating. Let's go and see what they offer. <laughs> So this is where we're going. It's, it's nearly Valentine's, so it's all decorated with hearts and stuff. I've got to say, this is the first time I've been out in the evening for a very long time. And it's only seven o'clock. <laughs> Peri chenas are popular in North Italy. You pay just the price of a drink. In my case, I paid eight euro and you can eat as much as you want. Carlo and Lorenzo filled their plates three times.
In August, I was in France and we went to a brocante and I claimed, and I was wrong, I claimed that in Italy there was nothing like this. What I actually should have said was, in my area of Italy, on the Amalfi Coast, there's nothing like a brocante or an antiques market. Here in Vico Bizzano, on the second Sunday of every month, there is a huge, huge antiques market. We're going to go have a look around now. Every Sunday, uh, we have an antique market here in Vico Bizzano, it's beautiful. Um, all the people from around Pisa, they all come to Vico Pisano to see the, the antique market because it's a lovely. I've just seen these lovely ladders which would be great um, to have in the corner of the room for Carlo to throw all of his clothes on. I could get one for Sky too. Um, but Carlo says they won't fit in the car and he could probably make them. So we're going to hold him to that. Allora lo farai tu, no? no? Sì, sì, posso provare a farlo. Non, non sarò bravo come questo artigiano qua perché lui le fa professionalmente, ma la posso provare a farlo. Ok, well I'll take photos and then you can copy them, ok? Ok. Carlo's parents have still got one of these old phones stuck to the wall in their house and every now and again we used to ask the grandkids to make a phone call with it or send a text message and it was hilarious watching them try. <laughs> I've just found something for the garden that I really want and I've wanted for ages. A metal watering can instead of a green plastic one would look much nicer. If that's still there when we come back, I'm getting it. Now here is a basket seller. This is something I desperately need because all of my baskets have rotted away and our local basket seller is unfortunately no more. Apparently this is Rocco, Marie's friend. So, obviously these are all handmade, you can, you can see that they've come from some of the salice. This is salice. Willow. Salice, canna and salice. Salice, canna. Salice, canna. So salice and cane. So what's salice? Willow and cane. This has olive And that one's got olive on it. It's very strong. Where are you coming? Positano. Positano. <laughs> 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 Rocco Palle, 15 and 20. 35. 35. Uh, 35 together. Yeah. It's a, a very good, good stuff. Okay, it's a deal. Fatto. Per favore, è Napoli della mia vita, poi Napoli del mio cuore. I tuoi bimbi sono più buoni della luce del sole. Napoli della mia vita. Poi Napoli del mio cuore, prima di andar via, a te ti lascio il mio cuore. Bravo! Hai preso il cestino? No! Grazie, dopo. Pensi come a 90 anni, solo il pensare di cambiare auto, che io ho il mio padre che ha 85. Carla is buying me a birthday present, apparently, <laughs> which I've chosen two little vases. This one's here, just two the same. And they will look nice with a couple of little flowers in them on the table outside. <laughs> We left the market, it's lunchtime, and we've come to Lali, just a little town, just about 20 minute drive, and we couldn't find anything open, and then we could hear noise coming from this Cercolo here. Now Cercolo is the Italian version of a social club, really, and a lot of the little towns have them, and they're open to anybody who wants to go in. There's always a bar, and there's always places to sit, and they are doing lunches, uh, pasta, with a new leave a donation and then raising money for the earthquake victims. So we're going to go in there and have lunch there. So here you leave a donation, whatever you can afford to leave, 
and then you can go in and have lunch. And look at all the people having Sunday lunch in here. Let's go and see what we've got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and we even get dessert and Vincenzo. Wow. <laughs> and you. And you. Uh, questa è davvero l'ultima passeggiata. <laughs> Stiamo ritardando ogni volta. <laughs> we've been here for a week in Tuscany, so it is time to go home. We've got to go and pick up Sky, and uh, we've loved it here. We've done a lot of exploring. We've had some great hosts who have taken us round, shown us all the little villages. Grazie a Lorenzo, grazie a Marie. Grazie a voi. Grazie a voi. È stato bellissimo stare qui con voi. Grazie per la vostra ospitalità e amicizia. And for taking us round, and for showing us the area, and for even showing us houses. We are not moving to Tuscany yet. We are perfectly happy in our home in Positano, but we are thinking about our options and we're enjoying it as well. Ciao a tutti. Ciao ciao. Ciao a tutti. Ciao, ciao. 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 Ecco.